Hello. So I've got this little game and what I want to be able to do is when I hit execute I want the rocket to fire. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on camera because it's a bunch of pretty basic things and I'm sure that you'll be able to follow along. So if you need to know how to connect the UI up to a script or how to make particle effects fire or how to do some interscript timing stuff this will be a tutorial about that. So let's get programming. The first thing we want to do is create a new script which we will call a rocket engine and then we want to open that up in monodevelop. I'm using C Sharp as always. You can try and do this in JavaScript but I strongly recommend you learn C Sharp. So this is the rocket engine. How do we make a rocket engine work? Well when we add a rocket engine to our rocket, so here is the here is the rocket object and it's got a bunch of stuff in it that we're not going to worry about too much but how do we make the rocket engine get fired? Well we drag the rocket engine onto this and we add it like so. Now when we go into this execute button which is right here, we have a bunch of options and down here at the bottom it says on click. So we press plus and it gives us this and we can drag the rocket into that and then we can choose rocket engine and then we can choose anything we'd like but the problem is we haven't built a script for it yet so we've got to build a script so this script here is currently on the system but it doesn't do anything so the first thing we need to do is we're going to be using a particle effect so public particle effect particle system I can't ever remember the exact name but that's that's fine particle system rocket exhaust except we're actually going to be using two because uh, you generally want to use two particle effects rather than just one. Uh, the reason for that is because it just looks better. So you have two slightly different particle effects and it should work out fine. But uh, we haven't built these particle effects so let's go ahead and build them. Over here in our scene view we need to add some particle effects. Now Unity does come with some particle effects that you can add so if you import the particle effects it will add all of this stuff into your standard uh, assets folder. And then you can just choose whatever you'd like. Fire seems like a good option for us. So if we were to drag this onto the rocket, you can see that we get a fire effect. But these particle systems, uh, here you can see that it actually contains several particle effects. These particle systems are not what we would like. They are elliptical. Uh, they are ellipsoid particle emitters, and those are good for a lot of kinds of effects, but they're not good for rocket exhaust. So we're not going to use that, but we are going to use the materials that are included. So let's create our, a nice little particle effect. Uh, create. Is it not considered a 3D object? What's it considered? Light UI. Part there it is. Durr create a particle system. So we're going to name this rocket exhaust and this will be, well let's go ahead and name this rocket fire and this will be our firing uh, mechanism. Now you can see it comes with a default spread but it's pointed the wrong way so we'll just rotate it 90 degrees and then we will I held control by the way to get that nice clicky um, degree change. I'll drag it down to the rocket here so this is the rocket exhaust and we want it to fire straight down but you can see that it's not the right shape so we go down to shape and we got a cone but see how big the cone is it's huge let's go ahead and shrink that down like this and we don't really need it to spread very much so let's go ahead and make it a nice narrow cone like this now what we need to do is we need to make it really feel like fire to do that we're going to change the start lifetime to 0.5 and then we're going to change the start speed to 20 and you can see that we have a much faster set of, of system. We have a much faster set of particles, but we don't have very many. So let's click on this emission tab and change it from 10 to 100. Now it's starting to shape up, but there's still lots of stuff to do. The first thing we need to do is change this. We don't like this default particles. So we'll go into the sources directory, standard assets, particles, sources, and we will go into the materials directory and let's choose some materials. Uh, you can see we've got flames of all sorts here. 
So let's just experiment with them. Let's see what the fire additive looks like. Um, do I have to open up the render? There we are. Fire additive. Oh, that's kind of promising. Let's go ahead and use that. So what our next step is, we're going to make this color by lifetime. Check it to turn it on and then click it to open it up. And what we want to do is we want to click on this top right one and drag it to zero. And that means that it'll turn invisible as it goes along. And you can sort of see that already. See how it fades out now? But what we actually want to do is have a nice little um, uh, peak in the middle. So we're going to do it like this. And now what happens is it peaks out. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this there. It peaks out in the middle rather than at the end. But it's still not perfect. Uh, what we'd really like to do is have a slow gradient at the end. So we'll do that by clicking here and making this uh, 29. Uh, yeah, 12. And 12 is a little too low. How about 70. There we go. So now we've got a good looking fire effect, but there's still a, a couple of things left to do. The first thing is I don't like all the particles being the same size. So over here we can click on random between two constants and change it from a 1 and 1 to being uh, 0.5 and 1.5. And that'll give us a nice chunky feel. The next thing we can do is we can actually have it shrink over time or change size over time if we would like. But we're not going to do that with the fire. For our purposes, this fire is good enough. What we want to do now is create the smoke. So we're going to duplicate the rocket fire effect and name it rocket smoke. And we obviously don't want the fire particles. We would like the smoke particles. Well, there's a lot of smoke particles to choose from as well. So. Hmm, it's hard to see. Let's go ahead and change the emission and the, si and the shape just so that we can get a better idea of what's going on. So once again, the shape can be changed by just dragging stuff like this. Nope, oh, don't drag the whole thing. Just drag the... There we are. So we've got this smoke, but the smoke is traveling at the wrong speed. So rather than a start speed of 20 and a lifetime of 0.5, Let's give it a lifetime of 2 and a start speed that is a random between 4 and 15. There we go. That'll give us a bit of a smoke effect. Let's make it between 4 and 10. There we are. That's like what we would like it to see. So that, uh, that particle effect actually looks pretty good. That's more or less what we would like it to be. Uh, so when we hit play, you can see that what we've got is a smoke and a fire, but the problem is that the smoke is on top of the fire and it's really blocking it out. The reason for that is because the smoke effect we chose, if we select it here, it's not uh, a it's not an additive particle effect. It's uh, an alpha blended particle effect, which means that it actually will go, it'll be more opaque. It'll be on top of the uh, fire. Now there's a lot of things you can do about that. But the easiest thing to do about that is to choose a smoke that is additive. And so we've got the smoke trail um, material that we can use instead. Let's go ahead and drag the smoke trail onto it. But unfortunately, the smoke trail is this very, very vivid color. And that's because we've got a lot of particles that are being added together really aggressively. And there's a lot of things we can do about that. But the easiest way to fix that is to go into the car color here. And instead of having a 255, Let's only have like a 74. So we've got a peak like this. And now when we hit play, you can see that we've got this particle effect is no longer strong enough to keep up with the fire, but it doesn't interfere with the fire either. So we've got a lot of options as to exactly how we want to do this. Um, uh, I actually think maybe a combination of the two might be the best option. So right now we've got the smoke trail. Let's go ahead and uh, I think that our opacity is a little bit low. Let's go ahead and change our opacity to, there we are. And here we can pump it up too, to, uh, there we are. But there's some other things we want to do. Let's change the size, uh, not size by speed, size over lifetime. So when you select this, it pops up down here and you can change the exact size of these effects. So if we were to bring this like so, we would have a small to large. What we actually want to do is 
uh, something like this. There we go. And now that makes our particle size a little bit small, so let's change our size to 1, 2, 3. There we go. Once again we have the brilliant yellow glow, and it's up to us whether or not that's acceptable. Uh, if we don't like that, we can change it in a lot of different ways. Um, probably we could lower the opacity again, but probably the easiest way to deal with that is go back into the color. You see how we've got us white selected here? We can change that to a brown. Like this. And then change this to the same brown. There we go. And uh, since it's alpha added, that means that these colors are um, added together. So the darker the color is, the less it gets added in because that's dark colors have values near zero. So if we look at this exhaust, eh, that's pretty decent, but it's not quite right because we want the impression that we are traveling upwards faster and faster and faster. And that means this smoke doesn't really make any sense. So let's go into our uh, external forces here. Nope, that's not it. Um, stop popping up random crap. There we are. Velocity over lifetime. Is this what we would like? Yeah, here we are. Change this to 1. No? Oh, that's that's the opposite of what I want. Um, oh, we can actually just change the gravity multiplier to 1. That'll work. That's probably too much. How about point? Point, point three. Yeah, there we are. So now, if we look at our rocket exhaust, we get the feeling that we're moving upwards. Maybe not terribly fast, but fast enough for our purposes. And the smoke looks like it's being lit from inside, which is a cool effect. Now, if you wanted to do something better than this, it's very, very cool if you have, like, a ground. You can have, like, huge gouts of gray smoke pluming upwards, bouncing off the ground. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to do that just yet though because that's that's its own little tutorial for now this will work fine the next step is to turn them on and off as we need to so the first thing we do is we go here and we just click click see pretty easy and then we go up to the rocket and here we've got rocket exhaust 1 and rocket exhaust 2 drop them in So what's our next step? Well, we need to have something that turns them on. So let's create a function. Public void toggle rocket exhaust. And then we say rocket exhaust one dot set active. Oh, no. Oh, we've got a particle system. So game object dot set active. Uh, rocket exhaust one dot game object dot active self there. So what I've just done, I'll explain this because it's just a little bit convoluted. Rocket Exhaust 1 is a particle system. It's not a game object, but it's attached to a game object. And what I did when I turned these off, I disabled the game object here. I could have disabled the particle system if I wanted to uh, by just turning it off, uh, play on awake, turn that off. That's not so difficult. And in fact, that's probably a better way to do it. Yeah, let's do it that way. So let's turn these back on. There we go. So uh, let's go over that one more time, and then I'll show you the change. So what this did is I said, OK, well, I disabled the game object, so I need to set the game object to active. And then I set it to the opposite. I actually needed to do it like this. So I just set it to the opposite version of active. But that's not what we're going to do. Instead, we're going to say rocket exhaust one dot uh, is playing. And this is whether or not it's currently playing. And we say rocket exhaust one dot is, is playing what I need? No, that's just a get. Um, there is a play, I just don't know. Oh, it's just, it's just play. Okay. So we'll say if rocket exhaust one dot is playing, rocket exhaust one dot stop. Yeah, stop. Rocket exhaust two dot stop. Else Rocket Exhaust 1.play and Rocket Exhaust 2.play. So we've just said if it's playing, stop it, and if it's not playing, start it up. Pretty basic, right? 
That's a really easy function. Anyone can write that function. And it's much more straightforward than trying to remember that the game object was disabled or whatever. So this is a much better way to do it than the way I was going to originally do it. And now the only thing we have to do is this button. Remember this button? We want to be able to press this button and have that happen. So down here in Rocket, Rocket Engine, toggle Rocket Exhaust. And save your game. Now you hit play. Oh, look, no particle effects, but when I press the button, it didn't actually move up. That was me moving the camera. So that looks pretty good. Uh, there are, however, a lot of other things that I need this to do. I think that's probably enough for now. Um, the timing stuff I wanted to get into is probably worth its own... Um, episode because this is already 15 minutes long.